Hello and welcome to the ITIL Service Transition course. My name is Sue Southern and I'm your instructor. Before we dive into the content of the course, I just need to explain a few things about the registered trademarks and copyrights that are associated with it. ITIL is a registered trademark of the Office of the Government Commerce in the United Kingdom and other countries. But when ITIL is written in its full format in, in the IT infrastructure library, that is also protected by the same trademark and copyright. Same is true for the Swirl logo that represents ITIL and the OGC logo that may also appear from time to time. The Crown Copyright is applying to the diagrams that have been reproduced in the course from the ITIL books and it's necessary to include those in the course but the licence that we have to do that uh, allows for the use of that information. OK, that's all I need to explain on those. Let's get on to the course description. The course for service transition builds on the general principles that you'll have covered in your ITIL Foundation course. So some of it will seem familiar for that reason and then you'll see we go into more detail on the other areas. It covers the life cycle aspects of service transition and it gives a, an overview of the processes that are covered in this life cycle stage. It considers the interfaces between service transition and the other life cycle stages and uh, also the processes that come up in the other life cycle stages as well. The course objectives are to explain the importance of IT service management as a practice. I'll also take you through uh, discussions about service transition in general and the principles and processes that fall within this area. We'll be carrying out the, um, well, not physically you understand, but explaining how to carry out the common service transition activities and to organise service transition effectively. We'll also look at the ITIL guidance on how to recognise service transition functions and the technology related activities associated with them. And we'll also cover how to uh, implement uh, service transition in your organisation. The last point to uh, consider on the objectives is how to discuss and analyse the challenges, critical success factors and risks that are related to service transition. The course prerequisites, any candidate wishing to be trained and examined in this qualification needs to understand the following points. So you need to be a holder of the ITIL Foundation Certificate, uh, so that is necessary that you have already passed the Foundation exam. And the, uh, if you've taken it at an ITIL version 2 level, then the version 2 certificate plus the Foundation Bridge Certificate for version 3, is uh, both of those aspects would be needed and you would have to provide evidence of those to gain admission to the examination for service transition. The examination authorities require at least 21 contact hours for this course. Now, what that means is the hours of instruction. So in other words, as you run through the modules that you have in GoGo here, uh, plus the, the exercises that are built into the course for you to work on, then that builds up uh, sufficient hours to to be able to qualify at that level. The further prerequisites are that you have to have conducted at least 21 additional hours of personal study and it is recommended that you understand what's in the syllabus so the syllabus is available for you on the website to download so you can refer to it and you will see in there that it makes reference to the service transition publication and I will also make reference to that publication as we go through the course. So there's a number of reasons why you need to have that book. It's also recommended that as you work through the book uh, on the, the areas that I'm explaining from the syllabus that you look at those chapters in, in the book and do the f further reading on there. And that's actually a way of uh, repeating what's been covered which helps it all to sink in. And because there's quite a, lo a lot to cover in the syllabus, I think you'll find it is uh, helpful to your learning to do that. 
If you've got at least two years' experience in working in IT service management, then you'll make a lot more sense of what the ITIL courses cover than if you're brand new to working in IT. So if you've got two years' experience or more, of course, you may have 20 years' experience and and that will make even more sense to you. So uh, some experience you'll find is helpful. The module topics that we cover, I'll be doing a a brief introduction to ITIL and this concept of the life cycle, explain that, and also an introduction to service transition, that stage itself, some of the principles that are covered in service transition, and the process of transition planning and support. Then we'll look into change management and then we'll move on to consider service asset and configuration management and release and deployment management being the uh, uh, key processes within service transition. There's also service validation and testing that I'll be explaining plus evaluation and knowledge management to cover as well. So those are the, the uh, listing all the key process areas and Then we start to consider the service transition common operational activities and how we might organise ourselves for service transition within a business. There are also technology considerations that are covered during the course and the implementation of improvement of service transition. The examination for this area is... uh, explained uh, there's some modules at the end of the course where I'll take you through how to prepare for the exam. I'll explain more about what the exam contents is and I also have some sample papers for you to work on and I'll guide you through a couple of examples of questions to get you started and then uh, set you up ready to do the uh, the rest of the sample paper and I'll also have a mock exam opportunity for you. Let's have a look then at the curriculum path for uh, for ITIL courses. What's shown in these green boxes are qualifications at ITIL version 1 or 2 that you may already hold. Here's the uh, evidence of the foundation course at version 3 that you'll have already covered and that gives you a choice now as to whether you go into the life cycle module stages or the capability modules. So the life cycle modules have service strategy, design, transition, operation and continual service improvement. And on the capability modules we have operational support and analysis, uh, planning protection and optimization, release control and validation and service offerings and agreements. And the notable difference between them is in the life cycle modules, they are covered from a a managerial or supervisory point of view, and the capability modules are uh, considering it in more in-depth detail about the processes. And the exam boards recommend that you have a, a mix of these exams. Um, But in the main, they have been structured in this way to... uh, reflect the career choices you might have made. Managing across the life cycle is another course and exam that you can take and that covers a a lot more uh, detail that, that spans across all of these areas. And then with the accumulation of sufficient credits, as they're referred to, and there is a credit value added to each of these courses and um, as a result of passing the exam, then if you gain 22 credits, then you earn the title of ITIL expert. So the ITIL expert is not a course or an exam in its own right. Nor is the ITIL master, which is the top level in the qualification structure. So this is not a course you would attend or an exam you could take. And more details about how you would qualify for that are provided in a download document we've prepared for you uh, called the exam information. The examination itself, everybody wants to know what that's about and uh, what they've let themselves in for if they take it. And the questions that will be presented to you are, there's only eight of them, which is quite different compared with the 40 you had in your foundation exam. Uh, They're called scenario-based, which means that you'll have a, a booklet containing the 
the eight questions, and then a second booklet which contains the scenarios. And they're scenarios about a business situation, uh, tend to be about half a side of A4, and they will describe a situation to which the questions will be related. And each of the questions has four possible answers. So they'll be called A, B, C or D. And one of them will be worth five marks. That's the top marks that you could get. But in recognition, if you went for one of the others, that it may be the next best choice, then you could earn up to three marks for that one. Uh, and one of the others will just be worth one mark. And uh, the fourth one in there is only... Uh, called a distractor, so it, it achieves no marks at all. So what I'll do when I'm working with you on the exam module is try and give you guidance that will draw you to finding this one to get top marks, uh, to maximise your chances of getting a good pass on the exam. Now in terms of the pass mark, then you've got a possible 40 marks in total, so that's eight questions, five marks, five eighths of 40, and you've got to get at least 28 of those correct and, and four correct answers. Uh, and that gives you 70% of the total. So that's your, your minimum aiming point. You have 90 minutes to complete the exam. And during that time, you'll need to be reading the questions, the scenarios and analysing those to select your answer. Now, the 120 minutes that is described here, this is for candidates who are working in a language that they is not their business fluent language. And if you feel you qualify for that, then you must explain that at the time you book the exam, not at the time you go and take the exam. So that, that must be made clear right up front. Now, it is called a closed book exam, which means you may not refer to any documentation as you're working on your exam. And actually, you wouldn't have time to anyway, so uh, it's a bit like you did with your foundation exam. It, it, it must be uh, just you and the exam papers. Now, during the course, you'll find there are various pause points where I'll ask you to pause the video to perhaps do an exercise or read something. So I'll ask you to do that. But of course, you have the option to do that at any point during the course. You can always replay what comes up. Uh, and if you want me to repeat something, then it's easy to do. You can just rewind and replay, which is uh, the huge advantage you have with this style of training. Uh, the, so these points will give you time to, to go and look at something, perhaps read something in the book or carry out an exercise. With the exercises, I will give you a guide as to how long to take for them, but you can take as much time as you wish. Obviously, while you're learning and practising, then that's your choice. There, are, there is a paperclip link on the website that you'll see for this course where the, all the download material is available for you. Those documents that you need during the course, I will direct you to them at the point you need them. But there's some other information on there about the exam, for example, that uh, is also available. If at any time during the course you would like to ask a question, then this comment box is available for you. So you type in the question or comment that you'd like to make and click on post comment and that will come up to us and we will respond with an answer for you. Now, you can use that for any questions you may have about what I've explained now, or you also have the opportunity to do that at any point during the modules of the course. That's all I needed to explain in the course introduction, so thanks for joining me on this presentation. I look forward to seeing you in the rest of the course. Please come back and join me again soon. Bye for now.